Tonight at 5, protecting abortion access in Washington. How can we allow an unelected judge to take that right of reproductive freedom away from the people of Washington state? What action state leaders announced today in light of the latest legal battle threatening to restrict abortion medication nationwide? A convicted felon who's accused in a deadly hit and run is a no-show in court. He knows what the stakes are like. There's no way he was going to stay in this country. The suspect's long criminal history and where prosecutors believe he may be hiding out. And a boat burning all weekend long. And I've never seen anything like this. What investigators know so far and the environmental concerns going forward. Como News at 5 starts now. The fight for access to abortion care is making headlines nationwide today. We now know the Justice Department has appealed Friday's ruling by a Texas judge that would suspend FDA approval of mifepristone, the most commonly used abortion medication in the country. Meanwhile, the manufacturer of that drug announced it plans to ask the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals to stay that ruling. That comes as a competing ruling here in the state of Washington has ordered the FDA to protect access to mifepristone. Pristone. Also today, the governor of Massachusetts said that her state has begun stockpiling doses of the drug. Meanwhile, our state is taking more steps to protect access to abortion. The state Senate held a hearing today on legislation that would allow the Department of Corrections to stockpile and distribute abortion pills. Como senior reporter Chris Daniels is in Olympia tonight with this unusual move and what it could mean. Chris? Yeah, Molly, the bill's prime sponsor says the DOC has an extensive pharmacy and could distribute that stockpile of the drugs to people outside the DOC and that it is all perfectly legal. As spring blossoms, so does an old debate. This is a lunging into the dark. Reproductive rights, again, get a legislative hearing. Today, we're talking about a pill that is designed to end 30,000 lives within the womb. South King County Democrat Karen Kaiser is the prime sponsor of Senate Bill 5768. How can we allow an unelected judge to take that right of reproductive freedom away? She crafted the legislation that would allow for the stockpiling of thousands of doses of mifepristone and the DOC to distribute it to providers. I'm having a little trouble understanding that this is a drug that is for use outside of the Department of Corrections. Can you, has that ever happened before? It has happened before. It happens now. Why go through the DOC to do this? Our Department of Corrections has a pharmacy license and uses it already. It's a very active license. And they have the pharmacists, the distribution uh, process, and is really able to stand up this program. Should the Department of Corrections be doing something like this? It's a state agency, and if the state needs a action like this, the state agency can perform it. Kaiser told Como News she's not worried about the legal ramifications either. This Texas judge ruling really is worrisome because if they can, in one judge's personal opinion, repeal the FDA approval of a drug that's been safe and effective for over 20 years, why can't they repeal the approval of any other drug, maybe a drug that would treat HIV, for instance? The bill has been fast-tracked to get it to a Senate floor vote this week before any other court order nips the idea in the bud. In fact, the state DOC and partner agencies testified today there is precedent as well for distributing drugs through the Department of Corrections that do not have FDA approval. The session is scheduled to end here in Olympia on April the 23rd. But for now, live in a very rainy Olympia, I'm Chris Daniels, Como News. Chris, thank you. Washington state medical organizations are condemning that ruling to block access to mifepristone. In a statement today, the Washington chapter of the American College of OBGYNs and the Washington State Medical Association say, quote, Despite increasingly hostile and restrictive efforts to constrain access to essential reproductive health care services, Washington state physicians are dedicated to continuing to provide medication and procedural abortion services. Today's Como News Pulse poll is about access to abortion services in Washington state. Como's Preston Phillips is checking the results from the live desk. What are we seeing? Well, they keep changing as we keep bringing up the polls. They keep changing from the first time when we showed you at 4 o'clock. So this is the question we're asking you this evening. How would you characterize Washington state's access to abortion services? And you can see right now, though, 
Most people, 50% say too liberal. 42% say strikes the right balance. 8% say too conservative. To vote right now, you can scan the QR code there on your screen, which will take you directly to comonews.com. That's where you can cast your vote. We're always committed to being your voice on the issues that matter most. Our local Como Pulse poll, it's a great way for you to speak out and have your voice heard. A man wanted in connection with killing two cousins in a deadly hit and run in February is believed to have fled to Mexico. Investigators with the Washington State Patrol say that 20-year-old Antonio Lopez was involved in a deadly hit and run on I-5 in Seattle back in February. Como's Lynn Ann Wynn spoke with the families of the victims. She joins us live with the latest on the manhunt. Lynn Ann? Well, this is the second deadly hit and run Lopez is accused of being involved in in just five years. Family members we spoke with fear that if Lopez is not caught, he will kill someone else again. <laughs> Terrell and Skyler were like the lights for the family. To the, all they wear were a good time. Every time you seen them, it was all about fun. The families of Skylar Thornton and Terrell Aaron are still grieving their immense loss. Along with that pain, having to deal with the fact that their accused killer is still not behind bars. How was this guy still walking around free and allowed to be behind the wheel of any vehicle? Investigators are looking for 20-year-old Antonio Lopez, who they believe was behind the wheel of his girlfriend's Jeep when it crashed into Thornton and Aaron on I-5 near Spokane street around 3 30 a.m. the morning of February 26th. A third person in another vehicle was also seriously injured in that crash. Investigators believe Lopez was one of two people who then fled from the scene. Knowing that this person is out living their best life right now and my brother and cousin are gone. You know, they're gone. Lopez was convicted of a similar crash in Issaquah in 2017 that killed 21-year-old Kevin Lazoya. He ran down my son and he left the place and he just left him there like nothing happened. Lopez was 15 at the time of that crash and pleaded guilty, serving time in juvenile detention and ordered to pay restitution. He was due back in court to face charges for the latest crimes, but prosecutors say they now have information he may have fled to Mexico where he has family. He need to come back and pay for his crime because he's a criminal. Three families now hurting from the loss of a loved one as the search for Lopez continues. You need to turn yourself in. You have destroyed two lives and two families. People are really hurting. And a judge has increased bail for Lopez to over a million dollars. Prosecutors also say the U.S. Marshals will also be involved in the search for Lopez. Reporting live in Seattle, Lynn Ann Wynn, Como News. Lynn Ann, thank you. Tonight we're hearing new 911 recordings from the victim in an attempted kidnapping. Police say the man who was accused in the crime took the victim's mother to a Mariners game before she disappeared. I was in the car with some guy, and I thought he was going to kidnap me. And I don't know, I just, yeah, he got in his car and he took off. And I, I don't know who to talk to, I'm trying to call my mother. And some, somehow my mother is, just, is supposed to like, know something about what's going on. Investigators say that after Brett Gitchell went out with Leticia Martinez Cosman, he forced her son, Patrick Cosman, into his car, put a bag over his head and tried to strangle him. Cosman eventually got away. Gitchell is facing several charges, including attempted murder, kidnapping, and arson. His bail is set at $5 million, and he will enter a plea in two weeks. The search continues for Martinez Cosman. Two days after her disappearance, her car was found in Beacon Hill. Investigators say it had been set on fire. Covering Pierce County, fire crews are on day three now of putting out a large boat fire in Tacoma. The U.S. Coast Guard reports there was an estimated 55,000 gallons of diesel and 19,000 pounds of Freon on board. Como's Jackie Kent is live to show us the latest in this firefight. Uh, Jackie, big question here. Have officials said if that boat might sink? Not yet, but they say they are taking a cautious approach. The investigation into the cause of the fire, including exactly where it started, won't happen until the fire is out and it's safe to go on board the ship. Now today, if you take a look at your screen, you'll see the work done by all of these fire crews spraying the Kodiak Enterprise to cool the hull as the fire that erupted Saturday keeps burning. Officials are focused on keeping the ship upright as scuba divers are trying to find out where water is getting into the vessel. 
As of now, the Department of Ecology says there have been no fuel spills during this firefight, and they have set up booms around the vessel as a precaution. The shelter in place order lifted Monday morning for nearby neighbors and business businesses but that could change if air quality gets worse. Now coming up at six, we'll hear from a neighbor about the smoky conditions in this area. And also the fire department is speaking about its ongoing concerns. For now, live in Tacoma, Jackie Kent, Como News. Jackie, thank you. Let's get a live look along I-90 near Issaquah right now. Drivers need to be on the lookout for some road work this week. 56-hour lane reductions have begun on westbound I-90 between Preston and Issaquah. Washout says they need to complete some urgent paving work there. Those lanes will reopen on Wednesday night at 6. Let's get a live look at the Seattle waterfront right now. Spring seems to be on pause around here. Everybody knows that old saying, April showers bring May flowers, so we are expecting a lot of flowers with all of this rain. Let's bring in meteorologist Rebecca Stevenson. Rebecca, I mean, how long is this rain lasting? Well, it looks like we're in a definite trend of some rainy weather each day, in fact. There are a few dry days sprinkled into the week ahead, but right now, as we're coming out of the weekend, it has been so wet with just steady rainfall and low, dark clouds for the last two days. Rain totals have been impressive. We had record rain on the coast yesterday. They got a break today at Forks with nothing in the rain gauge, whereas yesterday it was over two inches. Now you can see most of our rainfall has been coming down from Seattle southward. About a third of an inch for Seattle, but half an inch for Olympia, and the rain is still coming down. We have a front that's ultimately become stationary. It's just draped over us, and it's continuing to have little disturbances roll through it to enhance the rainfall from time to time. We're going to see this continue through the night tonight before it finally pushes eastward, where they're already getting their fair share of rain from Yakima to Ellensburg and even over to Moses Lake and Spokane. But this rain will be moderately heavy at times. Right now, they're getting that moderate rain between Bremerton and Paulsbo. This chilly April rain will finally start to change over to showers as we get into the morning. But some of these showers are going to be heavy enough. It will create some problems with hydroplaning and slow down the morning commute. And then we got the below normal temperatures to talk about. Coming up, I'll tell you which days this week are going to have some sunshine and be drier. Taking a live look at T-Mobile Park, where our marine layer has long been suspected of smothering offenses, but there might be something else in the air that's actually benefiting hitters. A new study suggests that one reason why sluggers may be hitting it out of the park a little more often is climate change. The study, led by Dartmouth College scientists, analyzed 100,000 major league games and more than 200,000 baseballs. There is a pretty simple physical mechanism going on here, which is that when temperatures rise, the air gets less dense, meaning that there is less air resistance for balls flying through the air. The study says that since 2010, more than 500 home runs can be directly attributed to global warming. Over the last 40 years, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says the average U.S. temperature in June, July, and August has increased by more than 2 degrees. Yet another deadly mass shooting. What investigators know about the shooter's connection to the business he attacked and what else he did while carrying out the violence. Plus, brutal high-profile murders drawing attention to crime in big cities. I'm Kayla Gaskins in Washington. Como News continues right after this.